<laughs> Rhys Shearsmith has joined me, and, and I'm sure it's your ambition to to be doing an interview after Kiss the Bride by Elton John. I, I'm sure this is a peak in your career. I've done it many times, actually. <laughs> It's nothing to me. Was that on your rider whenever you <laughs> yes, whenever no. you come in? It always has to yeah, play me in. Uh Reese Shearsmith, the star League of Gentlemen, uh Psychable Space, Shaun of the Dead, Catterick, the producers in the West End. Aww. Uh the the list goes on. Yep. And now the English Civil War drama A Field in England. Yes, that's right, yeah. It's um about to be released on every possible screen or book or format that you can get your hands on, on the 5th of July, so you, there's no excuse to not see it. Now, now we'll come on to that, but yeah. first of all, let, let's have a little chat about it. I couldn't get a copy because they don't trust me here to bring them back. Oh, it's terrible. So I saw the trailer, yeah. and, and I would say it, it looks reasonably intense. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a very um, kind of strange experience. I mean, I think it's, it starts out quite conventional, these, these people deserting the raging battle of the Civil War. They climb through a, a hole in a hedgerow and they're in this field trying to escape and just flee the battle and they kind of become this ragtag bunch of people that have got this one thing in common that they want to not die in the war. And then they meet this man played by Michael Smiley who um, is this weird alchemist magical character and he makes them, kind of captures them and makes them look for this treasure in the field. And then we eat some mushrooms from the field and then things become strange from that point onward. That that generally never happens, I find. No, 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 that's, we've added that in as a, that as a conceit. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of the bare bones of what happens. But it's a great um, experience. I mean, I watched it when we saw the cast and crew of it, and it really made me kind of puzzle it out. I felt really, um, you know, you can't, you can't process it immediately. You don't quite know what you're meant to feel about it, which I think was good because it just makes you think about what is it? You're not, you're not going in with an expectation that either just delivers or doesn't. I think you kind of go in, you, you do feel like you've been through some weird experience. I mean, for what, me watching it was like that 12 days that we filmed it in, all over again, in yeah, isolated were, into an hour and a half. You were telling me that but just and that during the last only 12 days yeah. for an entire, entire movie. Yeah, the entire thing was filmed in 12 days on this field. It was really quite intense. It was like boot camp. No, no. the director, Ben Wheatley, who, who did Kill List, is, is, was that his intention to put you all in this field, make it really intense, co compact the whole thing yeah. to get you more into character? I think so. I think it's partly one of his insidious plans to kind of drive us slightly mad to do it in such an intense period of time. I did mean, he even, succeed? He did, yes. Yeah, <laughs> it was very um, kind of grueling, and but good. We filmed it in order, so it begins with us all quite kind of um, gung ho about it, and it just we do slowly get dishevelled, and you know that journey actually happens to us. So it, it, that was helpful. And there's, there's quite a lot of comedians. Has there ever been more comedians playing it straighter than this? Because you've got yourself, you've got Julian Barrett, you've got Michael Smiley, yeah. And then if you put those names up there, and then you think this is going to be a laugh. Oh press, yes, press the trailer. No, no, not to laugh. I mean, there are. It's darkly humorous, I, I suppose, but I, I, I wouldn't but, but call it a comedy. On, come on, your version of darkly humour, and 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 everybody, <laughs> and the, everybody else is the threshold of everyone else. Yes, yeah. No, it's slightly different. I mean, it's, it's not funny. I don't. Think. I mean, no, that's not true. It is funny. It's very funny, but it's blackly comic, I think, and a horrific. You know, there's a, there's a journey that these people go on in their minds and, and physically that's actually really quite gruelling to watch. I think quite horrific sometimes. You're watching through your fingers. It's weird. And and you're also um, you also were mentioning this this is now a first. Why has this been released? Hang on, it's going to be on uh, cinema, uh, on free TV, yeah, on DVD, on video on demand. Now I'm not a smart man, but if it's free on the telly. Why? Why am I going? <laughs> because has someone Patrick, thought this through? Yeah, yes, they have. Because some people actually want to see cinema uh, films at the cinema, not just sit at home and what? watch the television. Does the world not want to just watch stuff on mobile phones? <laughs> you well, mean that as well, and you can. Um, but the, that's I think you know this film is it's a very odd film anyway. An amount of people would see it if it was released on however many screens, not many, at the cinema. It would get a name for itself and then would bleed out onto DVD at a later date and you try and catch it that way. But I think it's kind of just interesting to kind of give them the lightning rod of when it is released on the 5th of July and let everyone, while their heads are turned toward it, grab it while they can. I think more people will see it that way. You know, it's not going to cripple Spider-Man. No, it's not going to cripple Spider-Man. <laughs> but, but are you going to get paid? Oh, no. 
No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Money? Oh, no, 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 no. But we don't do it for that, do we? It's for the art, darling. Yes, yeah, yeah, it is. Okay. Uh, we're going to take a tune and uh, and then we're going to be back to... Because there's... How many how many gigs have you got at the moment? Oh, well, there's lots of things bubbling under, yes. Bubbling over, perhaps. Yeah, I would say Bobby. King of understatement here. We, we'll maybe see if we can squeeze them in. Can we put Simon Mayo's show back in our so we can discuss <laughs> all the things that Reese is up to? Aww. We'll play a tune back after this. Grace. We are back with... Reese Shearsmith, we are discussing his new movie, A Field in England. We're also going to be talking through some of the other stuff uh, that you're involved in. Now, now when you, you've done big shows like, like League of Gentlemen with hardcore fans, yeah. do they get slightly protective whenever you go off and do other stuff like this? Or, or do they embrace you in a different role? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think, I mean, I'm quite anonymous as an actor, I think, and in the characters I've played in my... Show so if you know me, you probably do only know me from that, and, and really know me because you're a fan of of those things. So I think it's maybe a surprise for people that I'm in things that not that I haven't written, and that's and if you like what I've done, you might be inclined to have a look at it, just because you think I liked him in that other thing. Mm. So I don't know. I don't know if people follow my path as I. Obviously, I'm just toddling along doing bits bits and pieces. I would imagine that, that you know, judging some of the content of the stuff that you've done, mm. the type of people that follow your career yeah. um, could be potentially weird and wonderful. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm sure they are. Of course they are, if they're following and, and have got an interest in me. They yeah. have to be, yeah. <laughs> do, you but, inter- do you interact with your public or do you keep them at arm's length? I try to keep it at arm's length. I think, I, I mean, as well as... Because I'm just, a, I'm an actor and I think... Uh, quite an anonymous one behind the characters. We've always wanted to be kind of let the characters speak for themselves and, and keep ourselves kind of quite um, hidden behind those parts. And then you believe the parts more. You don't, if you kind of give yourself away as the person, I think there's less to reveal. But but even when you're doing, you know, a, a big show, I mean, you've now got social media. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and surely there's a bombardment and an interaction and people want to get your take on everything. It's, yeah. yeah, you do get that, yes. Yeah. So, and, and, you know, I joined Twitter kind of to think it would be a good way of getting I oh, know uh, a way of getting kind of just uh, tell people it's on at nine o'clock on the night and that kind of thing but you know you do kind of get um, people constantly asking you questions and you, I, I answer a few of them but I just kind of I, who cares what I think Patrick well, you see, that you know that's very refreshing because most people actually go on Twitter because they think they're a deity. They actually, right. They actually think they're a god. And so, you know, people don't say, what did you learn on Twitter today? They say, <laughs> how many followers have you got? Yeah, I know. Yes, it's, it's silly, isn't it? It's a bit, it's a bit weird, isn't yeah. it? Um, so tell us about Inside Number Nine. Yes, well, this is a new um, series that Steve Pemberton and I have written, which was from our... League. From the League and from Psychoville. And we... We didn't do a third Psychoville, so they said, what do you want to do instead? And uh, That's very nice, though, to be at a stage of your career where they say, you know... Because sometimes they just say, no thanks. Yes, they do, yeah. We, we're done with you. Um, go somewhere else. We, we've, we've rang you out like a rag. But um, they didn't say that. They said, well, if you've got any more ideas, what let us come back to us. So that's what we did. And um, we had this idea for... We've been so kind of uh, interested in doing a narrative story with Psycho where you follow it each week and there's a kind of cliffhanger ending and you can't wait to watch the next one. Hopefully that was the feeling behind it. That we thought it would be quite nice to return to in the wake of the episode four that we did in Psycho which was... Um, kind of self-contained one story, really. It was in one room, it was quite isolated and claustrophobic. We liked that playlet feel to it, so we thought maybe we could do six of those in a kind of Tales of the Unexpected type series. So that's what this is, really. It's kind of... Are uh, you going to have the, a, a similar uh, title sequence to Tales of the Unexpected? Yes, that, yes. that was very Steve exciting. And I, nice. Yeah, but it's Steve and I, though. Silhouettes? Yes, with, with flames. I like that. No, it's not quite that. But, uh, yeah, there's six different stories each week, and Steve and I are in each episode playing different characters. And you've got a great cast. There's Tamsin, uh, Tamsin Gregg and Timothy West and uh, Gemma Arterton. Yeah, really good people. Um, it's lovely when you do a script and you send it out and you get people saying yes because you, you think it's... Um, I said to Gemma Arterton, why are you doing this? You don't need to do this TV programme. She wanted these really good scripts. I really get good scripts. And I thought, that's lovely. So I'm uh, very pleased it makes you think you're doing something right. And so, so has your head always gone to, to the darker side? Or whenever you, you write something like this, do, can you switch it on and off? And well, we, um, it's hard. Our humour, I think, is naturally darker than most people's, I think. Because we, we, that's just the way that we, what we find f- the humour from. I don't know why. We just start writing things. We've tried, experimented in trying to write hey. normal, yeah, kind of uh, my family type things. And it, there's always... 
it turns into something else, you know, and that when and when it becomes interesting to us is when it would something happens that you wouldn't normally have on a seven o'clock show. And you're also involved in this uh, Peter K show. Yes, yes, I did. When has that been? That's been done. I've done my bit on that. Yeah, he's still filming it, but I went and did a couple of days on that with him. Yeah, he asked me to do. A, and what was that, that like? It was good. Yeah, I mean, he's got this strange conceit of this car share idea that you and the, the program is qu- it's quite low-key for peter it's just him picking up a friend in the morning driving to work and then it fades out and then the next thing is he's driving her back and one of the episodes he picks me up as this um, mad fishmonger and that's all you're getting kids yeah that's it that's it there's no more to it than that okay uh tell us but that you- is all there is to it really <laughs> But you see, when you're Peter Kay, you can just go in and pitch that. Yeah, and that's that. yeah, yeah. No, it is funny. Peter is very funny. Yeah. We'll take twelve. Uh, <laughs> so, so the the movie is out on the on the fifth. fifth yeah, next Friday, week on Friday. Uh, it will be uh, released UK nationwide cinema on free TV, on DVD, on video, on demand, on the same day. Yeah, no excuse. You have to watch it. You can't not. You can't get away from it. It's no. basically going to be like the BBC's Glastonbury coverage. <laughs> Thanks for coming in, fella. Not at all.